because she rang me on my phone and were practicing, <laughs> practicing answering it. And of course, in those five seconds that we were doing that, the surgeon rang. So, today it's Abby's. Kay's going, are you going first? I will do what I need a wee. Oh, right, okay. Has the best knitability. You'll like this. Has the best picnic ability. How much longer do I need to do that, do you think? Do you need some longer? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Well, maybe, actually, two more rows. Welcome. This is so weird, Dan said that I've got to do the welcome and then it feels well, very dissing, peculiar. To dissing my welcome, so get on with His it. His welcome was terrible. That's what I said. <laughs> I say. Welcome everybody to it. episode 69. 69. It's the 1st of March. 1st of March. Very... <laughs> You're doing me, aren't you? Well, we'd flip... I don't... <laughs> you see, I automatically drop into it. I see why you do it now. Yeah. It is the first of it March. It is the first of March. I'm very excited. White rabbits, it's March. white rabbits. White rabbits, right. Ra Where does that come from white and why? Rabbits. I have no idea. My gran used to do it's it. It's a good look thing, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know where it comes from. My gran would do it religiously. Nana Jones. Do you do that? And Some Nana Jones rabbits. was, of course, the, the owner of the of the griddle pan. Oh. We're back. We're back. Yes. <gasps> it's After been a, a long month. time. It's been a month. It's been a month. It's been four weeks. It's exactly a month. I think we recorded on the 1st of February last time. Did we? I think so. And what, what's really interesting is it's been a month and really there's not very much to, to tell you at all. <laughs> not very much has happened in that Nothing. month. Nothing. It's been really boring. I don't know what we've been doing really with our time. What have you been doing with your time? <laughs> You've been doing a lot of knitting. I have, only in the last week or so really. Well, you've clearly done a lot because uh, yeah. how many finished objects do you have later on in the show? I think I have six. Wow. Oh my goodness. I think, if, I, it, if I've added correctly. And how many what's on your needles do you have? Just three, Perfect. but two are new. Ooh. So that's exciting. That's even more exciting. But yes, we've had, we've had a busy month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dan's got a little less of him. Well, a, a bit more than I had a little less of. Yeah, that's true. I have managed to put on a bit of weight. Yeah. Which is good, because I'd lost about a stone, I think, hadn't I? At 15, 16 pounds, I think he'd lost, actually. What's the, how much is in a stone? 14 pounds in oh, a stone. okay. Wow. We, in England, we always, well, you know, at our sort of age, you always weigh yourself, and it's in stones, stones and pounds. Yeah. Um, and I know in other places they use kilograms and or just pounds. I find that all very confusing. I have to know what it is in stones. Me too. Um, so yeah, you lost quite a lot of weight. You are now putting a bit back on, which is really yes. good. Yes, yes. It's um, officially, I think it's officially, definitely, the hardest four weeks. Yes. Certainly of my life. Yes. I don't I'd, know about yours. No, I'd agree. I would agree. It, you know, Dan's surgery went well. Oh, it was great. In terms of the actual surgery yes for, went, for, went as planned let's yeah let's say straight away the surgery went fine and it's what they thought we've got yes. another consultant's appointment but i had a phone call the other week and it's what they thought so you know everything's looking really good which is great yes. Th that doesn't take away from the fact though no, the, that the surgery was massive yes it really really was and yes. you know dan's incision starts kind of is it here yeah and goes a, starts in my rib cage and then runs all right the way, down. the way down it's about 13 inches the scar it you know it, it's enormous quite neat actually yeah they did a great job they did a great job i mean yeah. the, the whole hospital and it's place. central we thought it would be to one side you know but it's not it's straight down the middle yeah the whole hospital experience was 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 good with yeah. regards to the care yeah it was very good they, yeah. they were they were brilliant a, a few you know exciting things along the way they lost yeah. my consent form 
as I was being wheeled in and I was like sat there waiting to go in and eventually got in for the surgery, which was really good. But actually just before I went in for the surgery, the consultant came to see me and actually he, he came to see me and this might maybe what put him off. He came to see me to get me to sign the said consent form. This is when I was still in my room. And he said at the end of that, at the end of that uh, conversation, and he's a really important guy, you know, yeah, you know yeah. top, top guy, yeah. referred to him, we'd insisted on, on having this particular consultant, you know, so got the best possible care. And he says, you know, would you like me to phone your wife after oh, the operation? don't, don't, don't. So this it, is it, just can, awful. Can, can you believe that? I mean, that, that just does not happen. I've had, uh, I've had three surgeries now. And this is the first time any consultant yeah. has ever offered uh, yeah. to personally... Yeah, I don't mean that was awful. What actually happened, we'll tell you about yes. in a second. But no, that was absolutely fabulous. For a consultant, because, such a busy consultant, yeah, to, to offer say that. that he would, he, you know, personally would ring me. And previously, when Dan's had his other surgeries, that's never happened. I've always had to ring and speak to just somebody on the, the ward, you know, and just ask how he was. So he said that, and I, you know, that was great. It really put my mind at rest. He could probably clearly see that I was quite worried, and so I went into panic mode though because I thought, and you know, we're now getting close to being wheeled in time, or, or being taken from my room, should I say, to to the waiting room, and I, I thought if Kay doesn't know that she's going to get a phone call from the consultant, if she gets a phone call from the consultant and he says, "Hello, it's Mr. Thomas." I would just absolutely freak. Because so I, you would, wouldn't you? So I thought, I've, I've got to get a message to her somehow. So I got my phone and I'm like halfway through sending a text and the porter comes in and he goes, right then, time to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, you know, I've had hours because I was admitted the night before. So I said, look, can you just give me just a moment? And he was brilliant. He said, yeah, absolutely no problem. So I got the text out, sent it. I didn't have time to see, you know, if I knew it had gone, so I knew she'd get it. And off I went into surgery, which was great. Came out, woke up. Uh, I mean, actually, pre-going in, the the, the um, anaesthetist, that's a hard it's word. It's a hard it? word. It really is. Anybody out there who is one of those? Yeah, credit to you. That's a hard word to say. The anaesthetist was just brilliant. And um, they did an epidural and did a great job. And I came out, and unfortunately, the epidural, how strange is this? The epidural had taken really well on my right, but on my left, no, wrong way around. Taken really well on my left, hadn't taken very well on my right. So I woke up in the most excruciating pain, like screaming and shouting, can't really remember this. What I do remember though is them rolling up a towel and wedging me up on a side so that all the drugs came across. And at some point in that process, someone told me what? that you'd missed the call. How did they know? So what happened? I will tell you what happened. There is one person out there that knows what happened. And I, I and know it was it, it was the it was the lady who spoke to you. Oh right. Who told me right. that okay. you missed the call? Right. These people must have thought I was the most awful wife in the world. But what happened was right. I had a friend with me on the day of the surgery. Thank the Lord, I had this friend with me. And it got to about two o'clock and I said to her, what happens if the surgeon rings me and I'm doing the school run? I had to do the school run, you know, maybe an hour after that. So she said, have you got hands free for your phone? And I'm like, gosh, I've no idea. I said, I think so. So I went and I found some earbuds and I said, I don't know what to press though. What do I press? Because it has, it's one of the Apple ones and it has that little thing, doesn't it? But you could press either the top, middle or bottom. I didn't know which to press. So she said, look, I'll ring you on your phone now and we'll just practice. Well, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? So she rang me on my phone and we're practicing, <laughs> practicing answering it. And of course, in those five seconds that we were doing that, the surgeon rang. Obviously got an, you know, engaged, whatever, left a message. Well, whoops. And then this message beeped and, um, and I said, oh, I said to my friend, oh, it, it'll just be you that, won't it? And she's like, oh, no, I don't think so. You better check it. And of course it was the surgeon. <laughs> so he had to leave a message. And luckily, you know, I was really grateful that he did leave a message because he didn't have to do that. I didn't know it was me, you know. Things are coming back to me now. So, Things are coming back to me when I was in the waiting room. They were laughing their socks off about this. Oh gosh, well, and, I just felt so awful. And, and, well, and well, I'm sure someone shouted across the room, oh, was she out shopping? And oh, like, well, Gosh, this is what people think. <laughs> you know, and you know, my friend knows what I was like that day. And you know, and 
we were, we were kind of laughing about it afterwards, after the event, you laugh about it, don't you? And she said, I cannot believe he rang in those few seconds that we were doing that. That's just unbelievable. And all day I'd have my phone like this. <laughs> I was just, and he rang. Oh, I couldn't believe it. And then of course I said afterwards, I said to you, gosh, they must just think I'm dreadful. But I, you know, I didn't. No, they didn't. Because it's not like it rang and rang and rang and I didn't answer it. It would have just clicked straight over, wouldn't yeah. it? So hopefully, you know, the surgeon realised that I was on the phone. But then he was probably thinking, well, you know, what the dickens is she doing on the phone when she's expecting a call from me? But you, oh. but you got a phone call from recovery, didn't you? But I did because I ran. I How did ring. That? So I, I was late. I'm late there. But again, it's they totally must have just out. thought that I, I didn't give a monkeys because obviously I'd got that message that was about two o'clock, and then I knew he should be back on the ward around five. So I rang about quarter to five, and he wasn't back yet. And I spoke to somebody, and she said, "Oh, you know, he should be on his way back soon." I said, "Fine, I'll ring back in about half an hour." But then 10 minutes later, someone rang me. Yeah, Miriam. Yeah. And again, the way she spoke to me, she said, oh, did you get a message from Mr. Yeah. Thomas? See? And I'm like, do you see now they must just think I didn't even pick up that in. message. And this has only come back to me now. You know, I, it's only dawned on me right now. And you didn't know that I knew you'd missed the call. It's, no, only, it's only now no. that I'm remembering all this. It's funny, isn't it, how you know how, heavy anaesthetic uh, affects your, your, your memory. I just felt but, so terrible. But how and, great, though, is that? that I, come I, out, I come out of surgery and I'm there, and, you know, everyone's laughing and I'm laughing and it's all really funny. Oh, really funny. Well, yeah. it's great for my body. <laughs> yeah. I just, so, you know. the, the surgery sorted, recovery. I mean, it, they, they really prepared me for the worst. You know, they said you might have to stay in recovery you know, yeah. for 12 hours. And, you know, I was saying this to you, so if you don't hear from me, mm. don't don't worry about it. Just because of how serious the operation was. But everything went really well. And go back to the, the, the ward, um, and into the ward. Somehow managed to do the TV thing. I don't know how, because I, I was completely spaced out. And the other amazing thing about this was... The TV thing, you, th there's there's bundles and there's days that you, you've got to say how long you're going to be in. You've got to pay for this. So if you're doing it daily, it costs like three times as much mm. as if you do a bundle. So I thought, and bear in mind how heavily sedated I still was, I, I picked a bundle and that bundle yeah. ran out. And I had no idea at this point, I could have been in hospital for 10 days according to you know the nurses. That bundle ran out one hour after we left, mm. after you picked mm. me up. How weird is that? Mm. It came back to the ward, on the ward, and I've got my epidural, and I've got my, my thing to press, and the guys from the pain team come round. You've got morphine as well, I think. That was morphine. Oh, that was morphine. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but it got through it, Kay came and rescued me, brought me home. And you know, really, and you, you were in for five days, I think, was it five Which was amazing. Days? I mean, which was amazing. The physio took me out. Second, at first day the physio came just at totally the wrong time. They'd got me sat up, and I mean the pain is nuts. The pain is still pretty, it's bad mm. still now. Mm. So back, you know, and back we're then. Three and a, three and three weeks, two days in. And and the physio comes out, and I'm you know I've been sat up all day. You know, bearing in mind I'm sliced open the day before, so not not twenty four hours after the mm. operation. And the physio comes around, and I've been sat up all day watching TV, showing off. You know, trying to look cool. Look at me. Physio comes around, says, come on, let's go for a walk. I stood up and I started shaking. Yeah. I started shaking like this. <laughs> it was like totally, t and I'm like, what's going on? Because I felt fine. The nurses came around and they were like, they were, they were really doing very much. Like, well, someone tell me why I'm shaking. <laughs> they just said, look, you've done too much, get into bed. Physio came back there the next day and he was like, what operation did you have done? And I told him, and he didn't believe me when I told him when I'd had it done and he went and checked with the nurse. Mm. So he was like, I can't believe, and it's the running. It's totally the mm -hmm. running. I was able to stand on two legs and just not have a problem. But I've come home and after five days and, you know, it's tough. But very, It's been very tough three weeks. And please, really, please really do. Really just has. Kay said before um, on previous episode, but you're going to need to just bear with us for a couple of episodes. Well, three yeah, episodes, actually. Yeah. We've got some really cool things planned, yeah. but it, the production value is just going to be slightly... Not quite to where they would normally be. Because we can't be. get out and about, obviously. Well, forget that, okay. Um, I'm sure people realise that more. There's just no way I can sit in one position. No, for no. the Because th the problem I have is, because they've messed with my tummy, as people will know who've had similar things done, I have to move quite a lot, because otherwise I get really bad cramp. And the doctor said this, so this is, you know, mm. this all normally. It's done. 
Everything looks really it's great. It's done. We both said, didn't we? It's like, you know, since last November, we've had this cloud. Mm, mm. And having it removed, suddenly you get all, all this creativity that had gone suddenly starts to appear with yeah. conversation. It's a very strange feeling, actually, you know, for something. Because when we got that phone call from the oncologist, you know, to say that the initial pathology, say, it, it's what we thought it was, which is, it's okay. It's a very, just a very odd feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is, it's different. It's different to going in and sitting down with someone and saying you've got cancer. Yeah. It's worse. Because it kind of is worse, yeah, because you don't know. No, you, you walk into that appointment and you don't know and you come out knowing and you can get on with it and dealing with it. Yeah. But in this circumstance, it's very different. It's like you've got to wait two months, three and months, also got to and go. you still, when we, you don't know within those two to three months what it's going to be. And, and that the route, is the route to finding out, I, I think the hard thing from, from my point of view is the route to finding out involves a shed load of discomfort and pain. Yeah. And that that's just... And you said it's actually been worse than chemo. Oh, it's way worse. We, worse than chemo. Just it's way worse. The, the sort of recovery of it. Just, just how I mean. Well, it is. Yeah. I feel I felt grimmer. Yeah. But we're here. Yes. And we're feeling decidedly. You know, I, I said to get. I said this on the post on the podcast, which we did, um, a week or so ago. That I went up to cave just one morning and I, I went like this and yeah. it felt like someone's been doing that to me for the last three months. And yeah, she said, yes, it exactly absolutely how it's felt does. For me. It absolutely so does. We are feeling extremely excited and I'm very infused. incredibly grateful that it all went okay. And yeah, also, and well, that in, you're okay. Yes. You know, and that that he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just unless you've gone through something like this and I know a lot of you have it's really difficult to put it into words and describe to someone how it feels really yeah and w- yeah. W- without without dwelling at all because we've got a show to do and we need to get on with it but just a, a tiny rant cancer is put across to the general public as something that is awful and depressing and terrible Certainly in the UK, the adverts you see, oh, the adverts, you see dreadful. people who oh. are we they won't. look, they just it's hard it's hard to describe, mm. and that is not the message which I would ever want to put out to the world, because look at us mm. and look at the episodes that have gone before us, and you know people who know us, people who know me, it doesn't need to be like that. You know, no. and, and from someone who's been through it, what I don't need to see when I'm fighting through it is something on the television uh. putting across to me that I'm done for. And that's all you get. It's I there. don't know what it's like in, in other countries. Now, there's, there's one, I'm not going to name organisations. It's certain organisations connected to cancer. There's one organisation um. which does a lot of adverts and they need, and I, I really feel, I do feel like saying something, because I feel like I can say something. Well, yeah, you're perfectly qualified. When you are going you? through it, you do not, and you're at home, and you're with your family, yeah. and you're trying to recover, you do not want to see something which tells you that you're done for. Yeah. And it's constantly. That's what it feels like, those adverts, if you're in the UK, you probably, you know, you're sure you will have seen these adverts, but... It, they're kind of constant, this sort of yeah. advert. Yeah. And at the moment, there's another one on for um, heart health, you know, heart disease. And it's the most dreadful advert I have ever seen. It's horrendous. We need to get the message out, but we and, have to remember oh, that people who are experiencing it will be seeing the message you're putting out. I and think, if the message that you put out is that these people are done for, just imagine what you're doing to that person's mental recovery. They're obviously, they're very like, it's for me, it's it, it feels like shock tactics, scare tactics, you know, it's going to scare you into leading a healthier lifestyle, you know, things like that. But I just find them awful. And they're always on at tea time, you know, you sat around. Sat down with your family for tea. Yeah, and we usually stick on like relaxing. pointless, you know, quiz show whilst we're having tea. And what then, of happens? course, the adverts come on and it's people dying of heart disease and cancer. What I will say to you... Really could do without that. What I will say to you, what you all know, and I hope that we're the living 
embodiment of this is positivity, mm. getting on with it, mm. and not accepting defeat is the message that people should be putting out. Because sometimes, I, I, it goes for me, I don't have, you know, I was saying to Kate, even this time, there's been a couple of times where you just start crying. You don't know why. I've done that a lot. You just start <laughs> sobbing and you're like, what, what's going on? So what you need from society mm. is, a, a, you know, it's a positive message. But I think, you know, the, the, the main reason for me saying what I've said is, you know, let's not beat around the bush. Bad things can happen to anyone at any moment. But you can get through them. Yeah. You know, Look, and people... So no matter how bad things may seem... Friends kept saying to me, you, you, know, will, you, will, be okay. you will get through it, you will be okay, you're strong enough to do this, and you never feel like you are, but you do get through it. They're right, you know. You will get through it. Just go a day at a time, an hour at a time, whatever you need to do to get through it. Absolutely. And, and just know that we're with you. Yes. Yes. And there's a very special way that we're going to be with you. Is there? Yes. Because Kay is doing something to thank you all for your support. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. I thought it was going to be more exciting than that. Oh. No. <laughs> Kay is the master at doing herself down. Well. Show it. Okay. And talk I've, about I've it. designed a little something and I'm going to put it out as a free pattern. I thought it would be more exciting than that, she said. I did. What is more exciting? <laughs> than a hat pattern. I've just got to move my mountain of eppos. And what is more exciting than a free hat pattern? Well, I started knitting this hat whilst we were going through all this um, and I just kind of made up the pattern. I think I showed it last time, didn't I? I just cast on the rib and I said I was just going to make up a pattern, which I did. And then I thought, as I was knitting, I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to finish this and put it out as a free pattern. Just just as a thank you to everybody you know that has just been so supportive and so lovely to us and it's made such a difference so I thought really this is the best way that I can say thank you is just to give you you know a little pattern that you can knit up so I did actually upload it onto Ravelry yesterday so there is a project page but you can't download it yet I'm, I've just got one person test knitting it for me it's a free pattern simple free pattern but I just thought I'd like to get it test knit anyway so that's been done now she's very quick so I would have thought it should be up on Ravelry within a couple of days it might even be up now when this podcast goes out but you know so just go over and check but the hat I've called it the angel hat you know you're all the angels really and you know it's it's all of you that's helped us through this and also I used to call Dan Angel <laughs> I did have a little Buffy phase. Well, very long Buffy phase, actually. And I still like Buffy, and I keep thinking I should re-watch them. But I don't have any now on DVD. I have them all on video. That's how long ago it is, isn't it? I have videos which, like, fill an entire bookshelf, don't they? And I got rid of them all, so I don't have any now. And no. That's a nice thought. I might do that. So it's the angel hat, and I just printed off the pattern. But this is the hat. Here's the pattern, look. Look at that. Oh, it's cute, that photo, isn't yeah. it? Look it's it. really cute. So here's the hat. It's just a simple textured pattern. Some nice crown decreases. I got the crown decreases to, um, you know, carry on with the pattern, which I was pleased with. And then I just stuck on a lo lovely little pom-pom because I had some leftover yarn. I used my own yarn for this, which is an Aran weight, but it would work equally well with worsted. It's kind of more like a heavy worsted just one size but it will fit most adults it fits well i should stick it on should now i muck my hair up but well it would fit you i think oh do you not I want me to stretch it, would, it no it would fit you look how cute it's just got this tiny bit of slouch which i really like and i always like hats to cover my ears i can't see the point in a hat that doesn't cover your ears but um you know that's just me but i did it the cuff long enough so that if you wanted to you can cuff it you know if you prefer a more beanie bit of beanie style so that's right. you should put it on i think it would fit you ready should we try yes don't cuff it though it won't fit it totally fits oh look how cute you look so sweet. Look at the bobble. Oh, look, it's really cute. <laughs> it does look a bit silly with the bobble, doesn't it? 
So there you go. It fits my head, which is an average size, and it fits Dan's head, which is slightly larger than average. Um, so what we need, so if we have a new hat pattern, yes, we need a knit along to go with it. Oh, we don't, do we? I think we need a superhero knit along. Oh, 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 oh! Right. This is very exciting. I didn't realise we were going to talk about this straight away. That's the hat pattern angel hat and i mean check ravelry it might even be up now and if Kate not design that yes because you have all been our angels and yes. angels in effect are heroes yes so if you fancy knitting this or maybe you don't fancy knitting this maybe you fancy knitting anything yeah for your hero yeah we're gonna have a knit along for it yeah how exciting so the plan is this you need to decide i think yeah. people should do this you should decide. We we have decided, and we will yes. tell you now who our superheroes are. Yeah. We will be changing our Ravelry uh, badges yeah. and maybe our Facebook badges and, and Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Sorry, yeah. yes, to our heroes. And Kay, would you like to say who your hero is? My hero. Do not let me down. Is Wonder Woman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted Superman. And we're not, none of this gal, I wasn't allowed. stuff. This is the proper Wonder Woman. Wonder, yeah, Linda Carter, yes. Wonder Woman. Because oh. she is, oh, that woman, oh my goodness. We watched a few little um, trailer bits, didn't we? My recently. goodness, can she sing? Can, she's an amazing singer. Did you know that, Linda Carter? You should just Google it, just YouTube it. You want to catch it when she was... In her 30s, 40s, yeah, when that's she was, when she was right. When she was Wonder Woman. At prime. Kind of, yeah. Amazing, amazing. She's done a lot recently too, and she's really good still. But prime of her life. Mm. Kay said she sounds like Karen Carpenter. She does remind me of Karen Carpenter. Yeah, she really does. She's got that kind of voice. She's amazing. So, so yes, I am Wonder Woman. Kay's just Wonder Am Wonder I not? <laughs> Don't get excited. I am not wearing the costume. Well, not publicly anyway. Um, <laughs> so... Case chosen Wonder Woman. We don't need to see that. Case chosen Wonder Woman, and you could choose to knit something in the colours yes. of Wonder Woman. So the idea is, you choose your your hero. Now we're talking about superheroes, but your hero could be anybody. It could be somebody, a you know, a fictional character in history. It could be a writer. It could be anybody, you know. But we're just kind of adding that fun element by saying superhero, you know, because we want this to be really fun. Yeah. Because we wanted to do something fun, you know. We wanted to come back from all of this and just get everybody involved in something really fun. I'm going to pick my superhero. So who but are I'm, you? Well, who I'll tell you? you in a minute. I don't know who it is. I'll tell you in a minute. I'm going to pick my superhero, but right. I am going to knit something for my hero. So do right. you see? So what you can do? You can do loads of different things, yeah. really. Yeah. So long as your, I mean, the, the bottom line is the knitting that you do has to be either based on your hero, your yeah. superhero. Yeah, so you could use the colours of your superhero yeah. or the theme of your superhero. Yeah. Or you could knit something for someone for who is your hero. Yes. You know, your husband might be your hero, your daughter might be, your, your best friend might be. Yeah. You know, so there's lots of options and we really love that there's lots of options. Yes, you know? but I really, really would love to see loads of people picking their superheroes. Yes. Yeah. So Kay is Wonder Woman. Oh, that, I mean, that's like made my year. She's so cool. We had a, a long discussion actually the other day about the lyrics to the theme tune. I was correct. I thought it was um, in your snazzy tights, yeah. fighting for our rights. Kay said, no, 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 it's in your satin tights fighting for our rights. Indeed it is. She was correct. Yes. So, who is my superhero? Who is your superhero? You are never going to guess. Oh, I'm not? No, because oh. I don't do superheroes, do not I? Not really, no. No, I am not a superhero guy. So, what I had to do was, I had to look into it. Right. So, my superhero has been properly selected. Yeah. And has the character most similar to me. Right. Yes. Does it go with Wonder Woman? Uh, any man goes with one <laughs> Oh, she's fabulous. Kay won't even know when I tell you the name of the superhero who it is. My superhero, and it'll be so cool if you guys know. Some of you will do. My superhero's name is Peter Quill. Peter Quill. His name. Is that his real person name? That's his real person name. His superhero name yeah. is Star-Lord. Star-Lord? Star-Lord. Have you just made this up? Nope, nope. No. What program was he, he on? He was, uh, he was an Earth... I mean, it's particularly appropriate. Talia might know. Isn't Talia Of course really? Talia knows. Talia. Loads Do you of know? people know. Right. I found 
I found it appropriate because as as a boy, his mum dies of cancer. He then gets kidnapped and, right. and taken away on a spaceship. Oh. Grows up to be a, like a, a space bandit, wow. um, like a bounty hunter. Oh, like Boba. Like Boba Fett, like Han Solo, right. but cooler, but cooler. He really, he loves mixtapes. So he loves putting together a mixtape. He loves dancing. And this I, has got to be in the 80s. And though, I do. Come on. I, I used to dance a lot. I put music on and dance around. Kay doesn't, she just laughs at me. But now this is where it's going to go downhill for you. Right. He's the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. Now I actually watched. I'm more interested in his costume, I've got to say. His costume's cool. Is it cool? It's proper cool. What's it like? Uh, it, is there a cape? It, 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 it's a long coat. Right. That, that is cape-like. Oh. He, he's very cool. He's very cool. Right. You'll, I'll show you anyway. Okay. I'll show you. But he, Peter Quill Star in the Star Lord and Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. I'm liking yeah. it. Peter Quill in the film is played by Chris Pratt from oh, Jurassic World. Oh, I like Chris Pratt. Yes. He's and very he's sort good. Of, his hair is sort of on the reddish side. It's blonde, isn't it? Yeah. I think the real Star Lord does right. have slightly redder hair. Okay. But I'm Star Lord. But who will I be knitting for? Wow. I'll be knitting for my hero. And oh, that's Kay. So, really? Yes. I didn't know that. Well, of course. I have to, don't I, really? Well, no, you don't have well, to. Well, I do, after the last month. Well, it's not a given. You well, it is a given. Oh, so shut up. Okay. And then I'll make for to, more heroes too. What are you to me? Who knows? Or dares to dream. You don't know what you need to know. No, how, but look, look. I forgot to bring my yarn what down. What is this called? This is... You're my hero. You're my hero. Yes. You're I my hero. I think about that. It's You're my hero, Cal. This is the You're my hero, Cal. It starts... Yes. Today. Oh! How cool is that? Pick we your we superheroes. We didn't want you to wait around and get no. excited. Let's, let's just, get on with it. Let's just get let's on with it. Let's download the angel hat yes. and knit it for your hero. Absolutely. Or the handbrake. I'm knitting with the yarn that I forgot to bring down. It's in my office. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I will show you next time. I think I might have shown you before. It's the fondant fibre yarn and it's called You're My Hero. Where? And this is what got me thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what I'm going to be knitting yet, actually. But I think that's what I'm going to... I'm definitely going to knit with that yarn. Yeah. So So new cow How starts exciting. now. Go. So there will be a chatter thread. Yes. So jump into the chatter thread. Yes. Tell us who your hero is. Yes. Why that person is your hero. What you're going to be knitting. Yeah. Um, and then there'll also be an FO thread. It'll. This will run yeah. two months. We're going yeah. to do two months. Yeah. In case you wanted to do a garment, yeah. you know, or a large shawl or whatever. And let's see some superhero pics on Instagram. Yes. Yes. That would Hashtag be cool. Hashtag. Yeah. You're my hero, Cal. Come on. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. So, I'm going to write down that hashtag. <laughs> So, as I said before, there's a whole load of new stuff on its way. There were so many things bubbling away before this news hit us. And now that it's it's beginning to float away on a cloud, yes. lots of things are starting to happen. I'll give you a few little hints. Ten weeks, a brand new segment is going to be starting right here. Um, and it's seriously cool. In ten weeks. In ten weeks. Right. In ten weeks, brand new segment. Is Come there, on. Do I know what it is? We were only talking about it the other day. Okay. Favourite places to knit is coming to an end. Don't get sad. Don't get sad. Don't get sad. Because it is going to evolve. Yes. So favourite... It's time. Whilst, it's time for a change. It is time for a change. Yeah. But before we can end favourite places to knit, because the question is, if we can't go out and about for the next few episodes, what are we going to do? Well, what we need to do is we need to nail down. If you think about how many castles, how many mm -hmm. abbeys, how many stately homes have we taken you to in the last two years, how do you know which is the best? You're coming to the UK, you want to go visit somewhere, mm. you need to know which one has the best knitability. You'll like this. Has the best picnic ability and the best interestability. We made up these words. So later on in the show, we'll start finding out. That'll be fun. Way too much talk though. Oh, there's a lot of talk. Let's find out. Kay Jones, what's... No, no. Wonder Woman, <laughs> what's on your needles? Yes. Oh, oh, that's so nice to hear. It's been such a long time, I know, hasn't it? I know. So I'll grab this first. I've um, kind of resurrected a project that I hadn't worked on in ages, since Christmas, I think it was, before Christmas. Um, and that's my scrappy cowl. This has been housed. This is the bag um, that lovely Luciana made me. Do you know the one that attaches to the side of my bed? On the, the, the handy-dandy little magical mat that she made for me so I've just unpoppered it 
and brought it down. It's got all these cute kitty cats on. Sasha, you'll love that. So this is my scrappy cowl and I'll just take out the colours I'm working on at the minute. Look what's in here. I've got in here my worry people. Has anybody ever seen these? It's a little bag. I can't even remember where I got these from. And it's a little group, a little family group of people. And the idea is that you put them under your pillow at night and while you're sleeping they carry away all your worries. Look at all the little people. Aren't these just the cutest things ever? I think I got them from like, I don't know, one of these shops you find in the places we visit, you know, like crafty sort of little shops. Aren't they cute? Look at my little family. I think they're made somewhere like Peru or, you know, the Andes or somewhere like that. Do they have hooves instead of hands? They're very sweet. <laughs> Look, how cute. So that's my little worry family and at the moment I've got them in that bag that sits by my bed. So here's my scrappy cowl and the last colour I did was this huge Christmas section which was one of the opal yarns. It's the one that, I think it's, is it Clang Welton, the pop music colourway, uh, which looks incredibly Christmassy so I was here so I picked it up and I've worked this much this lovely section here is one of my colorways which actually I think I'm going to dye up again this next week that's Sandy Cove which I've done before and I've had a couple of people ask for it so I'm going to dye that up and I've got a new base coming today actually the delivery will come I'm just trying out a new base it's a single ply merino fingering so like Tosh Merino light but it's got sparkle oh my goodness I'm so excited so I think I'm going to try Sandy Cove in it and Rose Quartz so I'll do some of each in that new base but I've started can you see the really pretty yarn here I've started knitting in the minis I got from Lovely Jewels from So, so Sweet Violet so I've nearly done this first one, which was, oh, was it Yamtan Tetherer? I think that one. And then I've got all these lovely ones. So I thought it might be nice to put these together in the cowl. Um, and then they're all, you know, they're, they're still together as they were when Jules sent them. So this has just been really nice sort of bedtime knitting again. I've just picked it back up and it's just basically like a sock head hat. I think I cast on something like 145 or 150, something along those lines. I did a provisional cast on, a crochet provisional cast on. And then I'm just knitting this gigantically long tube. And then when it's long enough, I will graft the two ends together, take out the provisional cast on, graft the two ends together and it'll be like a double thickness cowl, which I think will be really nice. So I am really enjoying working on this again, just the simplicity of it and just being able to work with, you know, little bits of lovely yarn and then you get to change it and work with another bit of lovely yarn and that's just really nice. So yeah, that's my first project and I'm knitting on three millimetre and these are the Knit Pro Novas, which I love actually. I've had a bit of a thing with needles and I'll talk about that when I show you another one of my projects. But these ones I really love for hats um, and I use these all the time for sock head hats so I definitely recommend Knit Pro Nova. Very reasonably priced, not expensive at all. So I'm really loving that again and I'm really glad I picked you back up because sometimes you know you put these projects down don't you and you think oh I'm kind of I don't know if I really want to work on that anymore but then you know just leave it couple of months later come back to it and you love it again so and it is that sort of project where there's no time scales you know it doesn't matter how long this takes and it is kind of this memory thing going on because I remember and it this section when we were driving down to your mum's in October I knit this section over Christmas and then I've knit this section whilst you know you've been recovering and there's one of my hairs in it there don't we all do that so it is definitely a memory project as well, and I'm really loving it, so. Great. That's my... Dan Jones? Yes. 
got some dawn gold. Socks. It's still socks. I'm really sorry. The skin looks dry there. It's dry everywhere. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> That's another. I've got no idea why. I'm drinking lots of water, but you the know, skin's really dry, I've yeah. been moisturising like crazy, and still it's really dry. And would you know why that would be? Let me know. For those of you who are wanting it, there will be a fog along update later on in the show. Oh yes. Yes. So we will be telling you where we're our mileage and how everything's going. But that's for later. Uh, it's a sock. It's for Kate. You saw it last time. Yes, it's a month ago. I barely in anything, but that's because... <laughs> <laughs> you just haven't I, I've been... I've just got you, caught. Just I've got not... serious core issues. Yeah. And th that, that movement has been hard. I'm actually not finding it too tricky today. Right. Um, but I tend to get cramps. Yeah, really bad. Yeah. yeah. Which is normal. It's all normal. So, you know, I'll miss a bit and then I'll just get cramp and I just have to move on. So I've, I've done a tiny bit. I have. You've been there. So... I'm not going to deny good, it. You, good, good. Oh, I've just found one of Bryony's toys in my knitting oh, yeah. bag. So, it, it, it is the same sock. It, it's just, you know, it's lovely yarn, isn't it? You know, there's nothing to complain about at all. The needles are perfect. No ridges on the back, so they slide really nicely. These are chargoos, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got something to tell you about chargoos. All right. Uh, so, and the cable's lovely. There's no yarn wrangling. You'll have seen on, on previous shows, I'll be knitting socks and the this will be all over the place, none of that. It's all really great. So, if you haven't got the do, um, and these needles, so long as you're okay with slippy, which I am. They're not that slippy, chow goos. I will talk about slippy needles in a minute. Okay. They're not, chow goos are quite grippy for a metal needle. Okay, well that's, that's cool. That's what I like about them. All right, cool. They're a damn sight slippier though than the wood ones. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely, yeah. What else is on your needle? Um, actually, These look nice. I'm going to talk oh. about the other thing because it leads on from what you've just said. Right. I'll, I'll do that one in a second. I cast on a new project, everybody. Are you excited? Yes. I'm excited. It's at a tiny standstill until today when the postman comes. Um, but I'll tell you why in one second. It's a project that I have actually knit one of these before and it's up there, I'll show you in a second. And I wear it and wear it and wear it. And for years, that one must be four or five years old, I thought I'd, I need another one of those in a different colour. I then saw one of my friends, Carol, who's Gingerbread Girl on Instagram, I'm sure a lot of you follow her. She recently bought some yarn and she's knitting one of the Susan B. Anderson Yowser shawls with it. And I saw this colour and I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to get myself some of that. And then I thought about this um, project which uses that exact yarn. Well, I, I used that exact yarn, yarn previously in a different colour. So I thought, right, I'm going to get myself two skeins of that. And it's this, it's Malabrigo Worsted. That colour is about right. Oh, is that not the prettiest pink ever? It's Malabrigo Worsted and it's Pink Frost. Look at that. That is pretty much exactly the colour. It's so lovely. So I've got two skeins of it. And I'm knitting. It's called Just Enough Ruffles. I always get that wrong. By, I think her name is Laura. Or, yes, Laura Chow. It's a pay for pattern on Ravelry. And basically, it's a long skinny scarf with a bit of shaping. I don't know if I'd call it a scarf or a, it's not really a shawl. But this is the one that I knit years ago. And this is the same yarn, it's Malabrigo Worsted. And I think this colourway was something like Emerald. It's on my project page. So this is very well worn. And to be fair, it's not pulled that much to say how much I've worn it. This is it doubled over. So you can see it's this long skinny sort of scarf that uses short rows to shape it and then you've got this really pretty ruffle on the edge and the way I wear it is I double it up like this and then I fling it around and then I put the ends through that bit and then pull it up and it's just I'm going to leave it on it's just the loveliest thing you know and it won't move around because you've bung the ends through there and it's just perfect it's perfect and it's so warm because it's worsted weight it's just lovely so I think one of those in this colour oh, will be so lovely yeah. so I cast it on the other day and I've only got this far and I will tell you why so you start you know with the garter edge 
really long basically. It calls for five and a half mil needles. Now previously when I knit it, I will have used these ones because these would have been the only ones I had at the time. But when I cast it on, I cast it on with the Knit Picks Sunstruck, the wooden needles. I've got an interchangeable set. I just can't get on with those needles and I think the main reason is they are very, very grippy. I think they're more grippy than like the Knit Pro Harmonies, Symphonies. The thing I don't like about them is the end, it doesn't taper really for very long and then there's a sudden straight. So it's not a very big taper and then very sudden straight. straight. It's not, you know, where it stops tapering and goes straight. It's not very graduated, it's very sudden and every, every single stitch I could feel it, it would go bump, bump. Do you know what I mean? So I changed it to this set, which is the ones I would have knitted on originally, and these are Addy Clicks. And I've had this set for ages, it's the first interchangeable set that I bought. And they're fine, I like the tips on these. They're very nice and long and tapered. The problem I have with them is, it's, it's like they're coated in oil, they're so slippy really really slippy needles and I just find I'm gripping really tight which is not good for me with you know the issues various issues I have so I've ordered some needle tips for my higher higher set of interchangeables I ordered five and a half tips which should come today so I'm going to get them and then I'll be away but I was looking with you talking about the chow goos I was looking again at a Chowgu set, interchangeable set, and I noticed that there's, there was Meadow Yarn and Pearl Essence. They were the kind of two main stockists in this country. Meadow Yarn have stopped stocking Chowgu and Pearl Essence have said the same thing as well. I read the same thing, or they're out of stock and they're not going to restock. And it looks to me like something to do with the way the exchange rate is at the moment and it's not cost effective for them to stock them. So I found that quite shocking. So I looked around and I did find one company that still has an interchangeable set of chow goos in stock. So I might order a set of interchangeables because if I don't, I, I think I don't think people in this country are gonna be stocking them anymore and to get them from America would be far too expensive to do. Um, so that is a bit, bit of a thing because I know a lot of us like chow goos don't we so anyway that's another little project that's on the go that should be fairly quick I'm hoping because I really want to be able to wear this while it's still cold it's really still cold today so I really want to kind of you know knit this quickly it takes about a skein and a half I seem to remember from the last one so I'm thinking with the half a skein I have left I've also got a skein of the same yarn in like a neutral beigey sort of colour I might do a hat to match cool because I never have matching things no so yeah lovely little project I've done a couple of rows oh. have I done two one two I haven't I because there's a second stitch on the needles I don't know what you mean there's one stitch there underneath, yeah. and then there's a stitch on the needles. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two stitches. Rows, you mean? Rows. Okay. Yes. Okay. So so. The green is one row. And then there's another green above. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thanks. I've no idea what I just told him, but okay. Well, I hope you do have an idea. No, what I you just don't. Told me. It's double knitting. What? It's like. No, no, can I, don't do that because. What? There's a row of green have there. Have I not told you hold I don't on, have anything on. to do Stop with it. double knitting? There's a row of green on... Yes. And there's a row of green on the yes. needles. There we go. See, she likes to say she doesn't know when she does. I don't like to be held responsible for making decisions. I've only done a couple of rows. But, you know, I've, I've made good progress on it beforehand and I'm sure I will do again. I'm feeling quite enthused about getting this really cracking. What else is on you? Oh, well... I must give that yeah, to Brian. Of course, it's Baker Bear's hand dyed yarn. It's very nice. And I will be dyeing yarn next week. and So there should be an update... It'll be the Saturday after, but I will put it on Instagram. So, my last thing that I'm currently knitting on, well, it's not, I do have the secret project, which I'm loving, but, you know, that's going to have to wait before I can talk about it. Um, I'm... There's, there's more than one secret project. More than one... Oh, I've also got 
another design on the go, but which I'm very excited don't. about. But two. It's two. Two. Two designs. Yeah, that's the other secret project. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. They're both designs, yes. but yes, but one yes. secret project is I quite I told you the creativity long was flowing. Term, whereas this other thing I'm knitting is is a quicker thing. Um, and I should, I'm hoping to have that finished for the next episode, actually. And, oh, I'm loving them, loving them. I'm knitting a pair of socks for Dan, and you're going to probably think I'm crazy. You're crazy. I told the patrons I was doing this, and everybody actually said, go for it, you know, why not? But because Christmas didn't really happen for oh, yeah, us yeah. this year, cool. you know, it just, I never felt it. I don't think either of us did really. You did more than me. I really struggled with it and um, just didn't feel the joy of Christmas this year. So I just th thought, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna knit down some Christmas socks and I'm you know it's February, it's March now. It doesn't matter, does it? It just means I've got an awful long time to knit them and I don't have to rush. And it's just you know it just gives me that bit of Christmas joy that I didn't have last year it is as it is now but what I'm doing is I'm knitting him scrappy Christmas socks because I've, I've got them on actually I made myself a pair of scrappy socks ages ago and I wear them all the time and I love them and I really enjoyed knitting them so I thought I'm going to do that with all my Christmas sort of yarns that I've got so I pulled out a ton of yarns that were all kind of Christmas themed or Christmas looking yarns and I'm going to use them all in a pair of socks so I've started one of the socks, so this is what it looks like so far. Let me just twist my cable around. Here we go. Oh, isn't it fun? Let me make that, there we go. Look how sweet that is. Oh, I love it. So I started off and I knit the cuff with this one, which is Trekking XXL, which I've never knit with before. It's very nice. The colour number is 603. Can you see that? Trekking XXL. It's kind of like opal, but not not as. I don't think the quality is quite to opal standards, but it's it perfectly nice. So I knit the cuff in that, and then I'm doing the. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole of the leg in this, or if I'm going to stop and then start another one. But I'm doing the leg so far in this really lovely. It's a hand dyed self striping and it's from Juliana's Fiber. I've had this a while. And the colour is Under the Mistletoe Self Striping 8020. It's her Lucid Dream sock yarn, Juliana's Fiber. And it's just beautiful. The colours are so lovely and rich. And I didn't know how it was going to stripe. And it looks, what it's doing. It's doing a stripe of the lovely red and then three stripes in different shades of green and this is the this is this stripe here it's just gone to red if you can see and the base is lovely it's really soft really nice and plump really beautiful yarn so I'm really enjoying knitting that and I'm just doing the standard 72 that I do for Dan on two and a half mils these are higher highers really loving that and the other yarns that I've got I've got it's not a full skein but you know it's plenty the opal clang welton that I was talking about and I think this is now you'll struggle to find this I think it tends to be out of stock because people have you know really loved it and it's 9040 pop music colorway so I've got that one I've got the cascade yarns heritage prints in the holidays which is lovely and then I've got some knit picks for lychee and jingle and I've also got this red solid sparkly which is desert vista dye works and this came with a set that was gifted to me gosh will it be two years ago now oh, I can't believe that and it's um it's called carol red and it came with the set which was the 12 days of Christmas and that's the it's sparkly red so I might put a little bit of that in it as well so I'm just sort of knitting away on these when I just want something nice and simple and it's just fun I really like you know changing yarns and you know the, the it gives a project energy for me you know you don't lose that enthusiasm and you will have some ends but that never bothers me I don't have an issue with 
weaving in a few ends to get a really nice finished product. So yeah, that's your Christmas socks. Cool. And that's your last. Yes. Cool. And that's my last too. Oh wow. Yeah. Cool. They have got other things on the go, but I'm not listening yes. just while I've been I'm unwell. Well, still unwell. So. Cool. Exciting moment. Is it? What is our favourite place to knit? The quest for the next three episodes is to find out. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going... Do you know what? I think in this country, I don't know if they do, they certainly didn't when I was at school, they should have debate societies. It was oh, a really yeah. good... They do that in America, don't they? They do, but... And yeah. they, they, you know, I'm sure maybe at universities, at the, you know, the right universities, mm. they'll do it, but we should have those. We're going to have a bit of a debate. Yes. And that debate is around... We're going to um, take each category, and today it's going to be Abby's, and... Kay's going to pick her favourite Abby. I'm going to pick my favourite Abby. We are going to say why it's the best. Okay. And we're going to focus around knitability. And what we mean by knitability, well, it's three categories. The first one's knitability. Is this a place where you can go and easily sit down and have a knit? Yeah. Or, you know, is it a bit challenging? Do you struggle to find a seat? Is there too many people? Yeah. You know, is it just not really yeah. very knittable? Uh -huh. We get that. Knitability. Yeah. Picnic ability. Oh, yes. Does this place... Vitally important. ...have a good spot to sit down and have a picnic? It also might have little shops... Yes. ...that are selling nice little things that aren't too expensive. Toilet you know, facilities, very important. facilities. We haven't even spoke about that. No, no, no. Because well, I sort of didn't because I didn't know if that was <laughs> too much. We'll maybe talk about that no, later. No, I think we need to tell everybody Okey about dokey. that. Uh, so, picnic ability... Is there somewhere where you can sit down and have a picnic? And then, for me, a real key one, and for K2, I think, is there interestability? Is there stories mm -hmm. that are easy to see within, you know, yeah. the, the site? You know, is there maybe little plaques which are telling you what's going on? You know, or is it just a place that's, like, rich with history and you can feel it? You know how we've spoken so many times about how when you go to a place, you just feel how that place yeah, used to be like an energy yes so sure. Kay is going first and while she's talking I'm going to score what she says and I don't mean specifically what you say I'm not scoring you and your words particularly but the right. way that you explain it to me is going to dictate what score I give out of 10 for knitability picnic ability okay. and interest ability okay and then at the end of Kay speaking I'll have a total I will then talk about my favourite Abby. She will score in a similar way. She will have a total. We will then show each other what our totals are and we will find out which of these Abbeys we prefer. Over the course of the next two episodes, we will do castles and stately homes. And at the end of that, we will finish off yeah. with a winner. Ooh. There will be one site which we rank at the top and obviously then each other one right. will then form a leaderboard of our favourite places to knit that we've cool. already taken you to. So, what is your venue? My favourite abbey is Jervo Abbey. And when did we go there? Episode, episode some two. Oh, episode two. Yeah. <gasps> Unbelievable. It also was part of... Have we of, not been back since? We did when we did the Hidden Histories of oh, Great Britain. The, right. the, the war. So we haven't properly oh, we did, been, but yeah, been yeah. back. No. Yeah. I mean, maybe we could and should at some point. Yeah. I oh. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Because we've got the hunt, treasure hunt to finish. Yes. Who knows where we'll end up. Mm. But go on, sell it. Sell it to me. So yeah, Jervo Abbey. We've spoke about Jervo, I think, numerous times. It's not too far from us. It's about 40 minutes, is it? Yeah. So it's a nice distance to get to for a day trip, not too far. It's privately owned. It's not very well known. You know, it's kind of off the map a little bit. So it's never hugely busy, which I love. You never really see crowds and crowds of people. Um, it's it's quite small, so it's a nice kind of feels quite intimate. You know, it's not intimidating in its size. It's the location is lovely. It's um, it's kind of you have to walk. You park in one area and then you just go across the road and you walk through like a field that's full of sheep, which is just lovely. And then you know you get to the abbey. So 
it's, it's always very quiet it's got a lovely atmosphere I really really love the atmosphere there it's very peaceful even when there's more people there you know on some days there's more people than others it, I still find it really really peaceful and I kind of get the feeling that it would have been a really peaceful place to live I, I do get a really nice feeling from being there it's fun we always take a picnic and it's fantastic for a picnic there's there are actually benches that you can sit on but we usually just take blankets and sit on the grass there's lots of different areas you can sit the shady areas if it's really hot which we've done before or the sunny areas um the one thing i would say that's in, that is really i would say the only negative is with regards to toilets especially with small children you do have to go back across you know walk out of the abbey back through the field across the road back to where you park the car there's a cafe there and technically i think you're only supposed to use the loos if you're going in the cafe but we have a couple of times but usually we do go in the cafe anyway and have a cup of tea afterwards so that is the only downside you know if you've got a child that suddenly needs the loo it's a I'm bit pretty of, sure though because the, the cafe is the cafe's own by the people who own the Abbey, so I'm pretty certain. I don't think they'd have an so issue. I got chatting to him the last yeah, time we, we were did, there. Yeah, we did chat I'm sure to him. If you just went in and said, I've been around the Abbey, is there any chance I can use your loo? I'm, I'm sure, sure they would say yes. yes. And the, the cafe there is lovely. It's a beautiful big cafe. They do not only sort of cakes and things like that, you can have your lunch there. They do things like sandwiches and quiches and you know stuff like that so you could definitely have your lunch there but we normally when we've been around the abbey and we've had a picnic lunch before we get back in the car we usually go in and sit down have a cup of tea and a slice of cake and that's really nice and there's also a few things you can buy as well there's a few foodie sort of things artisan sort of foodie things and little gift things as well and there's also a a model of the abbey, isn't there? Yeah. On how it you what it used to look like, and that's really interesting. When you're going round, there isn't really plaques and signs telling you about that area, and that I think just is because it's privately owned, obviously, and things like that cost a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I it, I just really really love it. Um, it is very interesting, I suppose. From the, but the saying that there are guidebooks that you can buy as well, where the honesty box is, you can pick up a little guidebook so you can read about it. I think they're like a pound or something. So re all round, I think it's I think it's just fabulous. And the only thing I would you couldn't change this because you know you couldn't really have a set of toilet blocks actually where the abbey is. That's the only downside really. If you know, especially with small children that the toilets are a bit of a distance away but it's not it's not a biggie is it really just to walk probably takes you about seven minutes i would say to walk back to the sort of cafe area so i just love it and we we, we used to we went for a couple of years on my birthday didn't we yeah. we took a picnic yeah and went on my birthday because usually it's my birthday's at the end of may and the weather's normally really nice at the end of you know towards the end of may so i might do that again this year actually Cool. So that's yeah. Jervo Abbey then. Yeah. So I've scored that. Okay. Uh, and you now need to do the same is it thing. Out, what's it out of? Each category is out of 10. Okay. So uh, Nitable is, and, and I have actually adjusted my scores as you've spoken. Oh, right. Because I felt that I've had to in, in the way that, you know, you've, no, I don't mean I'm not being critical okay. of the way you've spoken. There's things that you've said that have made me adjust the scores. Fine. So it's, it's tricky, this. Because, and don't put down yet, because I'll, I, I'm, this isn't the one. Oh. oh, it's tricky, it's tricky. Byland Abbey's exceptional. Oh. Rebo Abbey is really cool. Mm -hmm. Fountains Abbey mm -hmm. is great. Eggleston Abbey is really sweet. Easeby Abbey, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, could, I could really go on. It's really hard. But you know, if, if I'm thinking about these categories... And if I'm thinking which one is going to score highest, it's probably got to be Fountains Abbey. So my choice for my favourite place to knit in the Abbey's category, it feels like the Oscars. <laughs> oh Wasn't gosh, tragic, but we'll, we'll how on. awful. Is Fountains Abbey. And why? Well, it is the most beautiful place just ever 
you arrive in a car park and then you, there's a little walk. You know, a slight downside is there is a, a bit of a trek, dependent on where you park. There is a low car park, there's three car parks. There's a low car park where you can walk and go in, but you're sort of missing the beauty of it because if you park in the main car park and walk in and then dip down into the valley, which is where they built the abbey, you get to see the, uh, the Hubie Tower, which is just totally stunning. It's this great big white huge tower that they built with a big bell in the top for exactly the same reasons why you know churches have bells and towers now to attract the parishioners to come and come and worship and, and to pray and it was built in you know like 1536 this tower and it's still just it's just perfect it's there the walk though it can be slightly challenging if you have a picnic but once you get down there i mean that slope is pretty steep isn't it mm. once you get down there there's masses of space so if you've taken a rug, you can lay it out. And it, there's something quite special actually about being there on a summer day and it's always really busy. Mm. So that is another slight downside if you really enjoy the solitude. But if if you don't mind having quite a few people around, there is something quite special about being part of that throng. I don't know, it feels very cool. to, to And, and lose-wise, there's, there's lots. So, you know, if, if you need one, they're, they're normally within... Well, actually, are they? Mm, they're not actually. You've got to walk um, down. There is, is there one, one there is at one the on, mill. Yes, but you've got to. Yeah, you go up a little slope. So there right. is one down there. Right, right. So I mean, I think you're in a better position for lose at fountains than you are at yes. Jervo. Yes. Yes. Uh, and also, as well, the the great thing about fountains is you get down in the abbey. You fancy a nice screen. There is a place where you can go and get one from. There's also a lovely little museum which shows you just like Jervo, you know, all the all the, the the abbey and what it looked like when it was actually working. There are plaques. There's lots of plaques. You can get a guidebook. But you know, when I'm thinking about interest, for me there is more of a compelling story at Jervo than there is at Fountains. I don't know. And and that's me I'm now find myself talking up your abbey. Mm. The, the the story at Fountains is a lot more about the life of the monks and learning about how they lived and learning about what it was like when it was one of the biggest and most successful abbeys in the whole of the country. Jervo, the story is more how life ended and it was quite dramatic and there was there was fighting and abbots running off and hiding in hills and then getting caught and then sent to the Tower of London and, and so the story for me at Jervo it piques my interest more but if you were into learning about the life of monks and, and seeing you know a stunning sight then Fountains I mean it absolutely wins. Knitability I mean I think you're pretty cool actually I, 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 don't you Kay? Mm. Because it's so vast you can always find a place whether you want to be out there and proud and you know knitting and everyone seeing or if you're feeling a little bit you know like I don't want people to see me there's places where you can go and tuck yourself away and, and, and get on with it and and for walks actually if you want to go somewhere have a picnic and have a really great walk where you don't have to know the surrounding mm. area then fountains work so as you know as a day out I mean fountains might just pip I don't know. It's tricky. It depends what type of person you are. If you've wa if you've watched us, uh, especially if you watch Hidden Histories, <laughs> the Baker Vest picnic episode we did, and then you went off to Jervo, I'm sure you'd have just as good a time there as you would do at Fountains. But if you didn't have that sort of insider knowledge, do you think that's right? Mm. If you were missing a me, yeah. then perhaps. But you see then Jervo has such... A feel about it, yeah. and fountains doesn't no, have I that don't. feel I about agree. it. No, I don't. I agree. Fountains doesn't. Fountains feels more like. If you took Jervo and you Disneyfied it, yes, that's what fountains that's, is. That's the, what I was trying to describe. Yeah. It feels more like an attraction, yeah, rather than what it originally was. Yeah. yeah so I agree. Actually, you know. Fountains is a gorgeous place. It's a world heritage site. Yeah. You'll see amazing things and wildlife and, and you know, amazing trees and plants and everything about it is stunning. But it is just... It's so interesting debating this. Because you do find yourself, you know, coming to the conclusion which we probably would have come to. Yeah. And that is, 
I probably do prefer Jeff. Ah. <laughs> so, that's the end of my okay. pitch. Okay. Do, do, we, you a, do you have a score? Do we add them up? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Hang on then. She's making notes. <laughs> you rule. <gasps> you didn't even make any notes. No, no. She rules. I need rocks. to just find my scores. Right. Okay. I've got a total. So this is out of 30? Yes. Right. Okay. So missability. Eight. Oh, harsh. Justify it. Well, although there are lots and lots of areas to sit and knit, we did say it's very busy. So it might not be your thing to have people staring at you because yeah. people still do in this country. That yeah. you know, you might not like that. That's going to bring us on to a whole new quest later on in the year. Although there are places like Dan says where you, you know a bit quieter, you'd have to go looking for those. You have and, to know, you know it. Now. Yes. So. Uh, I put ten. Ah, oh, excellent. I agree. Yeah. Because there really isn't a lot of people there. No. And it's perfect. You could sit and knit all day. And even if have the, to pop to the loop. Even but if the odd person walked by, it's not like you've got a stream of people no. that you would get. And it fountains. is a stream of people yeah. fountains. It really is. You might so. see five people, ten yeah. people on yeah. a busy day yeah. at Turbo. Uh, okay, picnic ability. Seven. Oh harsh. Harsh. Well, I shall justify it. Yes. There is a bit of a trek. Yes. So if you've got heavy pic you will be picnic attire. Sweaty by the time you get there. You know, there. it is a bit of a trek to yeah, get there. So point. that's a point or two, isn't it? Um, it's always very busy. So yeah. whilst, like you said before, you will find a spot. It might be that there's somebody just there. Uh, I gave picnic ability, I gave it nine. Excellent. And I gave it nine. Yeah. Because the only downside to it is you have to trek to the loop. To the loop. There is no other downside. Those are very important to us, clearly. There's no other downside. <laughs> we have never been there even once and had a problem with finding a lovely spot. No. And no. also having someone come and sit right next to us. No. Um, so pick ability, yeah. definitely nine. Yeah. Interest ability. Seven. Why? Because um, you said that the story wasn't as compelling as other abbeys. We said that it felt a little bit more, not staged, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, businessified. Yes, but then you did say it's incredibly beautiful, which it is. It's got lots of interesting things that are still fully standing, like the tower and things yeah. like that. There's some fantastic walks. Yeah. So seven. Seven. For me, Jervo Abbey, interest ability is nine. Oh. And the reason why it's nine and not ten is because there are no plaques. Yeah. So you walk around, and unless you bought a guidebook, or unless you know mm. what you're looking at, you won't know you what won't you're looking at. No, you what won't know at. what you're looking at. Yeah. But the the story is tremendous. Yeah. And everything that you can see at fountains, you can see at Jervo. It's just a bit more ruined. And what for me is cool about that is it feels more like I get more interest and excitement about going somewhere where it feels like. The monks have just left, and okay, it's it's fallen down a bit, but no one's touched it. Mm. Whereas fountains, it's all been taken care of, which is great because they're great. taking care of it. Yeah, but it's preserved for yeah, everybody. Yeah, but so, that does impact on the feel of a place. Gosh, that's a low score. Oh, 22 out of 30. Jervo, fountains. Jervo gets 28. <gasps> Marvelous. So in the Abbey playoff, Jervo Abbey has won. So you now know, if you are coming for a visit, you've got a good report there yeah, on both, so yeah. you can make an informed decision. Yeah. But the one for us, absolutely, and is now at the top of the leaderboard, is Jervo Abbey. Yeah. And in second place, until we do next time's yeah. castles, <laughs> uh, is Fountains Abbey. Yeah. Uh, let's find out, Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Oh my goodness, let me just put those away. Right, gosh, where do I start? Start with my socks. That oh yes. You complained about because I'd worn them. Oh well, I did take a picture of these, but let's just in, show them. Okay, let's just show them. I finished Dan's opal socks. You know that I was knitting on with the two different colours of opal. It was from the Talisman range, and I, there was Force and Health were the two colourways that I used. He's worn these numerous times, so they now look like huge canoes because he's had them on his feet. <laughs> They just look so massive. Look at the size. People are going to be looking at those and saying your feet are not that big. They are yeah. that big. Um, but they're finished. And these did look beautiful <laughs> when I finished them. But, you know, they've been worn and loved and that's fantastic. And, you know, after a wash, they'll look perfect again. 
So that's the opal socks all finished. And I finished those, I think a couple of days before he came home from hospital. I, I really didn't knit on anything whilst he was in hospital. I can't knit if my brain is full of stuff. I just can't. But I did kind of, not force myself, but I really wanted to get these finished whilst he was away and have them done for him when he came back. So I did get these done. So yeah, that's the opal socks all finished. I then, if you remember last month, I um, chose my mystery bag for that month. And it was the lovely yarn from Erica, from Erica Luda, um, Dreams in Fibre. And I showed it to Bryony and she wanted me to knit her a toy with it. Now, again, I wasn't particularly in a hugely knitting mood, but I wanted to make her something. So I chose something small and I'm going to use a big chunk of that yarn in my one of my secret projects as well. Um, so I have put that to one side, but I knitted this little thing. Oh, hello. Oh, how cute. And it's the pattern is free on Ravelry and it's called A Little Kindness Monster. And that just seemed to fit with the kind of theme of what was going on. A Little Kindness Monster. And it's by Rachel Borello. So it's free pattern on Ravelry. It's on my project page if you want to find the pattern. And it's just this cute little monster. And I held the yarn double. I think it calls for a DK or a worsted. Worsted, I think. But I held the yarn double and then I just used some Cascade 220 for his little hat. And I don't know what creature it is really. It's kind of got rabbit ears and just some sort of generic little monster. But it's very cute and I knit it in a day I think. Or two days, maybe two days. Very sweet little thing. One thing I did which is I thought was brilliant in the pattern. Do you know when, can you see the mouth? Doesn't that look good? Normally when you're doing a really big smiley mouth like that, it's kind of tricky to get it to look nice doing just a normal, what's the stitch called, you know, just a normal running stitch. Well, she recommended that you used a, I can't remember the name of the stitch, it's the one where you, you basically come up and then go back down, but you go back down sort of and split the stitch. It's not a satin stitch, is it? I can't remember the exact name, but if, if you look at the pattern, she tells you the, the stitch name. But it just produced, look, the lovely smell, it doesn't move. Because sometimes, you know, you find your stitches jiggle about a bit, doesn't move, just brilliant. So I'm gonna use that technique now for any time I do a monster, you know, that has one of these really big smiles. I think it works brilliantly well. Might have been, I don't think it was called split stitch. Anyway, look in the pattern, it's free and you'll be able to see what it was. And it's got this cute little hat. She thought he kind of looked like a sort of fisherman or somebody who would be on a boat. So she called him Captain, which I think <laughs> is really cute. Yeah. I know, I thought that was really sweet. So brilliant little thing. You know, if you need a gift knit for a, a new baby or, you know, a, a, a child that's having a birthday and you need something quick, brilliant little thing. So that was that. I then, how many is that? Two. I've then finished, where's it gone? I finished another block on my blanket. My, I say it's my stitching time blanket pattern and but it's the Disney blanket theme and I finished another block and this is the Finding Dory block. So now I'm going to be challenged aren't I to remember. We've got Dory, we've got Nemo and Marlin, We've got, might come back to me in a second. We've got Crush. This is like the colours of a coral reef in the middle. We've got, is it Destiny? Or is yeah. that one Destiny? There's Destiny, and what's the other one called? I don't know. Oh. These two, one's a beluga whale, and the other one is a different sort of whale. I can't remember the two names. Mm. This one is the bird. Um, this one is the seal. Jeremy, I think, and then this one is Hank. So that's another square done for my blanket, and I've done five now. And I think I'm going to do 16 all together. I think it'll be four by four. And I'm gonna do Cinderella next, I think, when I'm next in the mood for some more mitered squares. So that's that. I then finished 
can you believe all these things? I went on this massive finishing thing these past this past week and I was like, do you know what? I want a fresh everything. I'm going to clear the decks and it's just been brilliant. So I finished my other pair of uh, prairie socks and it's the ones that were in my hand eye on the BB's blanket and I put in the contrast heels. So that's those finished and they're just lovely. I might give these to Bryony. I haven't decided yet. She tends to wreck her socks. I've noticed but you know she wears them and that's the main thing isn't it and she loves them the prairie socks knit along is finished now finished uh, I just closed the thread this morning and I'm gonna draw for prizes in endy bits so that's my third pair of prairie socks that I've knit and they're all finished and lovely and blocked and beautiful and then the last thing I'll take this off actually so I can put this on and show you I don't want to take that off because it's so lovely the last thing I finished was the cowl, the Anguli cowl by, is it Hilary Smith Callis I think? Again it's on my project page and I finished that so it looks like this strange sort of tube thing, it's got a seam at the back and it doesn't, it does say in the pattern that when you seam it the pattern doesn't line up. There is a couple, somebody did put a modification on one of their projects to tell you what to do to make that line up but it's at the back of my neck. And I just think nobody's ever going to see it. So I just went with, I just knit it exactly to pattern. And that seam wasn't a bother at all. I just mattress seamed it. And I think it looks quite neat actually. I think it looks nice. And this just, I love it. I absolutely love it. It just pops over your head. And you've got this little kind of, it's like bandit style, isn't it? <gasps> how nice and I use Madeleine Tosh Tosh Merino light in Pop Rocks is the pink and Winter Wheat is the gold and I haven't weighed it but I'm guessing it's probably maybe 60 grams something like that it's not a lot of yarn I think it's brilliant look at yeah, that yeah it's cool I'm keeping it on I love it I haven't wanted to wear it because I wanted to keep it nice cool so that's that done oh I love it and I think you could just knit these in a variegated yarn, you know, not even bother with the striping and I think it would be lovely. Fabulous gift knit because when I decided I wanted to finish it, I finished it in two days and I hadn't knit that much of it already. So, brilliant. I love that. Cool. So, That's all. six finished objects, wow. people. Well done. That's excellent. Oh, that feels good. Feels good to have a lot of finished things. It's time uh, to, to find out what our last favourite filming. Well, no, that sounds wrong. We've been doing our top five favourite yeah. films. We've done the first four. Yeah. And we're down to the last one. Yeah. And would you believe it? Stupid hair. Our yes. last favourite film <gasps> only ended up being <laughs> exactly the same film. It was going to happen, wasn't it? It had to happen eventually. And it's pretty obvious, so we don't need to dwell on it. We will touch on, though, just a couple of other things uh, that we've been watching. But oh. I'm sure all of you can guess. Can you all guess, can you all guess what our favourite film is? You have to shout it out now. Are you shouting? It's Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Would you believe it? It's Kay's favourite film too. I mean, that's just brilliant. It couldn't be better, really. No. I saw it when I mean I saw it when it came out in 1985. Um, I don't think I that, did. I did. I did. Mm. I went to see it seven times. My my wow. mum was great. I mean, they took me first, and then I was telling my friends about it and went to see it. And you know, it just it was just perfect, wasn't it? For 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 boys, it's a brilliant film to appeal to, you know, yeah. a, a boy of that age. That was the film, that was my film when I was growing up. It wasn't Star Wars. I enjoyed Star Wars, but I, I didn't see, the first Star Wars film I saw actually was Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I sort of, you know, I was sucked more into Back to the Future because I felt like first one out, that's the one for me. Mm. But was it later in life for you? Yeah, I can't remember exactly when I first watched it, to be honest. I wouldn't have gone to the cinema to see it. I know that. I honestly can't remember the last time I, the first time I saw it. What's so brilliant about the film is that the effects just look fine. Yeah, even now. They I haven't messed with it no. and it still looks fine. I mean, talk, and if you, I think it's brilliant. the way um, to gauge it is to go get another film yeah, that's coming out a similar yeah. period. And, you know, it's shocking. Yeah. It's shocking how dated that film feels. But, you know, the soundtrack's great and yeah. we just love it. And, and we love the whole series, don't we? Yeah. We love all... In fact, the third one, I think the cowboy one, is probably my favourite. Right. What? Well, so Back to the Future then isn't your favourite well, is. final film? Well, Back to the Future to me is like the whole thing. Oh, well, you see, now it gets blooming oh. controversial now. Why? 
Well, you could have totally had Back to the well, Future no, 3. no, I mean, I'll probably... Uh, no, I mean, if you, if you pinned me down, I would say the first one is my favourite, but I, I really like the cowboy one too. Right. Well, tricky then. Tricky. Well, Back to the... <laughs> Are we it's saying still... Back to the Future then? Yeah, well, right. yes. Okay. So, Back to the Future yep. is our favourite film. It's our top of the pile. Now, just a, another couple of things that we've been uh, watching. We're still watching Sherlock. We are really still watching that. Sherlock. In fact, we watched a really poor film the other night called Inferno. Ah. Uh, and we yeah, watched... the Dan Brown one. We watched Sherlock the night after... Well, no, in fact, we finished watching it and then we, and we put, put a Sherlock, some on. Sherlock on. And the production values, yeah. the difference was insane. Inferno it's was awful. It's not good, that film. It's not good. You know, and I love Tom Hanks. Badly edited, lots of soft focus, music constant. And, right, it said it says it's a 12, a certificate not. 12. It is not a 12. No. Bryony is 12 this year. I put it on. Within three minutes, she was like this. I had to turn it off. And I then, have, you know, watching it through, it's not a 12 at all. And so that annoys just me. Poor, poor. But point being, Sherlock's still watching that, still loving it. Yeah. But we also have been, or you have been watching the Gilmore Girls. When Dan was in hospital, it seemed a perfect time to, to start watching this. I've, n- I've never ever seen the Gilmore Girls. Not ever. Never knew what it was about. Not even an inkling of anything. And I said, to, you, know, you said to me, why don't you watch that when I'm in hospital? Because it'll just be easy watching and you can put it on in bed, you know, watch it in, on Netflix and just fall asleep watching it. And it has Well, been. that's what I've been doing and we've still been doing that. We're on season three, I it think. It totally now. has been. It totally it has, has been. It has totally, yeah. It's, and we're really, in, well, I really like it, but I am kind of struggling with a few things. And this might be controversial, but, you know, obviously this is just my opinion and I know how much it's loved. And we do enjoy it, you know. Well, we're she's still watching it. it. She has still to watch, watch it every night. Yeah, I'm watching it every night. You but know? there's a huge but. And that there is, is a huge but. You don't like the lead character. I don't like... At all. I'm really sorry. <laughs> and I've got to admit, Hi. I've got to admit, from, I've been watching it now because Kay has it on uh, before we go to sleep. And you're like... I'm like, what? What, what did what? she just say? What did she just do? <laughs> I'm really, really, really struggling with it. Um, and Kay was before I was. It's not like I've Kay's been watching no. it for a while, and, and you, you'd be saying this, but she's she but just doesn't seem to be a very. The thing is that we've come to the conclusion Lauren Graham was the same in parenthood. She was exactly the and same I character just wonder in if parenthood. This is actually the type of person. She's just that type of person. Maybe so. And, you know, you like some people, and, and you know, the people maybe aren't quite your cup of tea. So maybe she's, she's just, just not, not my cup of tea, and her, the way she runs her life is not my cup of tea, and. You know, the way that she talks to her parents, and I understand obviously everything that's gone on before it, but even so, I just, I don't know, I, I, mm, it just doesn't sit easy with me at all, the way that she runs her life, and, that you know, eat a proper meal, love. But the, the, the interesting thing about And you'd this... be the size of a house! <laughs> If you ate out how she supposedly eats, you would be enormous. And obviously she's skinny as the skinniest thing. The interesting thing about this is that you put it on and you you yeah, always put it yeah. on. So, so obviously something's is... pulling me back. And clearly she should be with Luke, shouldn't she? I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, this thing that has never happened... For goodness sake, I don't know, obviously, if that will ever happen. Well, that's what I mean. well, maybe it won't. I don't know. Well, I guess it will. But there's clearly something there, and I just think, can you not see? Can you not both see what's in front of you? Everybody else seems to be able to see it. Yet she goes for these men, and then you know she had that perfectly lovely man, the teacher. What was his name? I forget. Wasn't he just the loveliest person? And yet, oh no, you know, I'm going to pull out at the very last minute. That was dreadful. Well, that's interesting because. You could have been describing parenthood there. Well, yeah. Because there's, there's a, a teacher lot of similarities. there. Jason her husband, Ritter. yeah, I mean, her husband was this motorbiking fella. And her husband. He is in parenthood. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of similarities, isn't there? And I don't but, know. But, but you're still watching. But I'm still watching so clearly, it. So clearly, clearly, there's something good about yeah, it. And yeah. I must it's admit, just easy watching, isn't it? Very easy watching. I can fall asleep watching it, which is yeah, good because yeah. I can't fall asleep watching something that is either tedious and boring or is so engaging not. that no. your brain is. So it's, it's a nice, lovely. 
it's definitely viewing, not it? boring. It's nice, no. lovely viewing. And I That's think some of the some of the actors in it, I think, are brilliant. Her mum, I think, is a brilliant actor. Her dad is as well. I like Luke. I think he's great. Her daughter is okay. Um, you know, some of the other younger characters, the um, her, fr- her best friend, I really like. So. Final thing just from me on a good film that I watched because I've been watching a lot of films while I've not been well um, and that was Whiplash so it's the the Damien Chazelle who did La La Land the first film he did was Whiplash and the reason why I've enjoyed it so much is because it's about a drummer oh. but that's the, the point of the story is more about someone growing up and finding their feet and, and it, it, it appealed to me because it was so like my memories of growing up but also the tutors that I had so it, it was just brilliant and the end of the film is just brilliant I loved it it's one of the best films I've seen in a long time mm. so if you fancy you know if you're into music if you're a drummer if you're married to a drummer uh, but if you're into music specifically if you like swing if you like big band stuff give it a go because it's really good it's the end of it end of it Hero Cal has, be- <gasps> has begun yes and is running for two months. I want to sing the song. Angel, I'm singing it in my head. Angel Hat will be, I think it probably will be out, but you know, it'll be out imminently yeah. if it's not yeah. out, but just keep your eye on Kay's Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so perfect, but also, I mean, you can, anything, anything. Anything you like. But you know, if you're looking for, for you know, that's a good start, but, but yeah. the, the, the handbrake, handbrake yes. as well, you know, could yeah. be another thing that you might knit for your that's hero. That's also a free or pattern. anything. Yeah. So here are Cal's on going. Yeah. Prairie Socks Cal. Let's finish. Finished. Let's find out who's won. Yes, let me get the prizes. I'll just lean over. I extended it a little bit just because, you know, we weren't we weren't here. So it made sense just to extend it a bit. Sorry for the noise. Um, so there's actually three prizes. There we go. I've got them now. So I closed the thread. There was 59 entries, which is fabulous. Thank you all so much. And I think in the actually on the project pages I think there's well over a hundred projects now which is just phenomenal and I'm so pleased that everybody seems to love that pattern you know all the all the feedback I've, I've had has been positive which for me you know as a designer that's just the best thing that's all you want for people to enjoy the pattern so thank you all so much I just want to know who's one just want to know who's one I I'm do. so sorry right so three winners the first one actually is a, a new prize. I don't think I will have mentioned this. Lovely Mina of Knitting Expat, who's had her baby, baby Layla. Congratulations, Congratulations Mina. Mina. And Perry. And Perry. Loads of hair on that baby. Just um, fabulous. What's the name um, of the baby? Layla. Da, 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 yeah, we do want to sing the song da, 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 every time we say her name, <laughs> Mina. <laughs> You got me on my knees, lady. <laughs> we do, but she's incredibly sweet, so yay. Um, she donated one of her New York collections, you know, the, the collection of sock patterns, and I think actually the first pattern comes out today. So the winner will get that collection, plus, you know, they will have the first sock pattern ready oh. to knit up. So the winner of that one was number 13. Looking for some? And it was for... Yes, it was for Cappuccino Girl. Cappuccino Girl is Deb in Australia. Congratulations! So Deb, I will tell Mina that you're the winner and then she'll get that pattern collection sent over to you. Cool. Okay, the second one is the lovely prize from Amy, a Stranded Dye Works. I've showed you this before. I've put it back in the bag now, so it's not the best shot of it. But we've got um, the yarn and we've got some minis there. So the winner of the yarn was number 42. And that is Mary in Washington, and she is M G L A D U E on Ravel on Ravelry. Congratulations, that's good stuff. M Glad you. Yeah. Yeah, Mary in Washington. So, can you send me a PM, please, on Instagram or Ravelry with your full name and address, and I'll get that sent out. And then the last prize was the lovely bag that I showed you last time from Pompadour, the Etsy shop Pompadour. And that one goes to um, Angie in Texas, and that's Sundaysy920. And Angie, I think you're one of 
Sasha's friends, aren't you? I hope I've got that right. So, Angie, you've won that beautiful bag. Yay! So, again, if you could send me a PM with your full name and address, I will get that out to you. Great. So, well done, everybody, and thank you for participating. That was super fun. You've got two other bags sat there. Are they there for a reason? Yes, I'm just going to show these. I've had a couple of other prize donations. Okay. Uh, I've not got time, shall I say? No, 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 no. Oh, right. you, But you, you absolutely can show them. What are these prizes for? Fog along. Fog along, fog along. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So, <laughs> is that okay? Fog along. At the last check, we will be doing another check, but it is the 1st of March today, so we've not been able to do an end of month check because we're obviously filming. We here. should have drawn for a prize. Yeah, but we'll do that on pop, won't okay. we? Oh, oh sorry, yeah. of course. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah. So, so and the next pop, which is at the end of March, uh, I, I told you exactly when that would be I'll have to put it at the bottom of the screen uh, so you know but uh, 2 p.m. Facebook group it's about the 26th 27th of March right it's at the bottom of the screen Brilliant. we'll be drawing then for a prize and will one of these be a prize or yes. will both of these be a prize or... well some yes one of these will there'll be you know one of these probably will be the prize okay. but I've um, had a few things sent to me for prizes and the first one I think I'll probably use this one actually for the fog along because it's yes. so fabulous I got sent this amazing bag look it's London. And what she said um, is Jill, and who sent this. Jill is featured in our upcoming edition of the Baker Bear News. Yeah, and Jill is uh, Bertie and Poppet. How cute. On Etsy. That's her details. She's got a beautiful Etsy shop. And she's in the UK, which is fabulous. We love that. And she sent us this bag to use as a prize for the fog along because she said she centred in the middle of it what she thinks will be where the club Reform is. Reform club. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So she, and she also sent a DPN cosy with like maps on Come as well. Come on. So fabulous bag, Jill. Fog along Look at us. that. You will be. I would, I would love that, to win that. So we've got that fabulous prize. And, you know, take a look at her Etsy shop. It's really lovely. And I love her. Look at her little card. How cute is that? Wow. And I always call Bryony Poppet. Yeah. So it just makes me think of that. And then um, lovely Luciana sent another couple of bags for us to use. She's so cosy knit. So these can be for the hero car. Well, they could. She said yeah. to use them whatever. So hero car prizes. And we've got one that's Italian themed with Vespers on. How cute. A little drawstring bag. Oh, something inside. Oh, it's got, oh, I didn't even realise, Luciana. It's one of those that separates in the middle. How cool. That's fabulous. And then she sent a London themed one. With little, oh, fancy a nice cup of tea. Yes, absolutely. So, Luciana, thank you again. Just fantastic. So, she's so cosy knits on Instagram, if you want to follow her. So, those will be hero. Uh, you're my hero, Cal, prizes. So, these ones I'm using for the hero, Cal. Is yeah. that what we've decided? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Luciana. So, yeah, fantastic. And there will be others as well that, you know, will, will appear at time. But, fog on, fog on. Where are we? At the last check, which was done a couple of weeks ago, the runners were at the Roman city of Serene, which I think was in Libya. And wow. they were at 3,880 miles. And the knitters are currently in Western Pakistan. They're frantically knitting through Pakistan and they're on 9,772 miles. Keep moving, people. Wow. Yes, but we've done a lot more since then. We'll be doing yeah. an up-to-date check yeah. and I'll announce that on uh, Instagram um, over the next week or so. Uh, the next Cook in the World segment, actually, oh. uh, is out on the 9th of March. Right. Uh, and you'll be doing an Italian strawberry cake, is it? Raspberry. Raspberry cake. Yeah, Excellent. it's a raspberry cake. Very yeah. exciting. Yeah, Italian recipe, so looking forward to that. Um, the Wow Cal, do you remember the one is the World Cal? Just finished Africa. Yeah. Sally Jane Cameron's done an amazing job in Africa. And she's just passed the baton over to the Knit Knacker Natters podcast. Yeah. So Fatima now is uh, flying along with her Asia um, yeah. uh, Wow Cal. And then we're doing April. And then we're doing April. And we have something very special planned. Do we? Yes. Yes. Oh, right. Yes. I don't know what that is. I've just got one last thing I want to show you. Is that Fine. okay? Sure. I got sent some yarn um, from a very lovely friend. And I just wanted to show you because it's new. I, I'd never heard of this. If you're an Opal fan, as you know I am, and I opened this and I was like, what's this? I've never even heard of this base. It's a new base. Um, and it's a three-ply. 
So it's a light fingering. It's you know it's thinner than the normal opal. It's you get uh, four hundred and twenty-five meters. So that's the same, but it's only seventy-five grams. So that's the difference. It's a thinner weight, and I was I was chatting to the person who sent it to me, and I think what I'm going to do is knit socks, but knit them on two millimeter needles. I think it make great summer socks, you know, really fine, light summer socks. So, and it's called Opal Light, as you can see there. And she obviously sent me this beautiful pink, because she knows me well. So I'm Lovely. looking forward to trying that, yeah. Cool. Fabulous. And that's everything? I think that, oh no it's not, I've got one more thing. Okay, come on then, let's do it. It's the 1st of March, I've got another mystery bag. Wow. Bryony chose a bag, haven't opened it, so I'm going to open it. Let's see what's inside. I'm just going to put a hand in. It's yarn. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, nice, nice. It's never enough time. Plum. In plum. Lovely. Somebody sent me this. This was a gift. That's lovely. Isn't it lovely that? Yeah. Never enough time in plum, 75-25. Superwash merino nylon. So I'll show that to Bryony and see if she wants me to knit something in that. It's really pretty. This actually would be fabulous for that new pattern yeah. of mine. So that might I might use that for that as a pair of socks for Bryony. So yay! That, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of episode sixty time. Wow. Neil, don't miss episode seventy. We will be letting you in on a little secret about what's happening in the summer. We took you last year on the hunt for Harry Potter, and this year we will be going hunting for something else something much more mysterious yes i think you're going to be quite excited yes. put it this way we're going international are we well we are aren't we international yes we're not flying anywhere or anything like that we don't need to fly somewhere to go international no really international means another country oh okay then yes. you see i was thinking Abroad, you know, abroad somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is another country. Yes. 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 Very that is exciting. correct. Uh, so we will, there might even be a little trailer. I might have been able to produce. Oh gosh, that's a bit produce. Well, it's, Are you struggling? It's two minutes right? of, um, well, I need a lie down, but that's fine. So that's the end of episode 69. Thank you so much for watching. Please do Thank just bear with everyone. us whilst I yes. recover from this, because it hurts. It does. <laughs> and on an afternoon, I normally totally zonk yeah, um, but yeah. thank you for watching we're back thank you everybody yes and superhero cow come on come on everybody Peter I hope Quill. You, yeah I hope you really enjoy this it, it, we just wanted to do something fun so, so find I'll, I yeah, went on to I'll Marvel and I looked at all their superheroes right? and I found the one there they had hundreds of them and you can right. pick the one that most suits you and let's just have some fun with it. But you know, you don't need to knit superhero colours. Like you no. said, knit for your hero. Do yeah. whatever you like. Yeah. Just have a bit of fun. Have a bit of fun. But let's try and be superheroes yes. for two months. Yeah. Cool. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Pause and sit and knit and stand and keep the take a replays. Enthusiasm's not quitting. Stand and keep the take a replays. They'll take you to fabulous places of which they're in a castle while watching the bakery repairs. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery repairs. What's on your shelf or what's in?